Gomez. Walto makes a run ahead of it. Burkamp suddenly changed pace through the centre. It's Burkamp! That's magnificent! The move, and then this, which left Dabby's ass totally stranded. Hello, dear viewer and listener and people doing neither, and welcome to A Burkout Wonderland, the podcast that is never knowingly on time. It's six minutes past start time. I'm not going to say who was late, but it wasn't me. Any idea who it was, Stan? It wasn't me, so I have no idea. Well, that's an awesome. Probably something we'll never ever figure out. That'd be something for um, the uh, the future of the human race. They can try and figure that out on their own. Uh, I'm stalling because uh, quite naturally I wasn't on the right page. That one there, and this one there. Boom! Right. Um, the game we're going to talk about tonight is FC Porto at the mighty Arsenal. First leg, lost it one nil. Shitty game, shitty team, shitty tactics, and shitty pitch. Any shitty you lad to like to add to that, Stan? Shitty weather. Shitty weather. There we go. That's one I didn't have down on the... Uh, if you had that down on the scorecard, well done. Uh, do you know the last few shows, we've, the last show we had over a thousand people watching on Twitter, but yet Ooh. the entire show for the whole of the two hours we were on only had about 800 views on, on Twitter. How does that work? A thousand people watching, 800 views. I'd say somewhere along the line that Twitter is broken. So hello to the two million people that are we no doubt watching tonight. Nice to have you here. So um, Champions League, second leg, Saturday, no, Tuesday, the 12th of March. See, I always make a mistake. I changed the date, but I didn't change the day of the week. Won't be long till we get Champions League games on a Saturday. That's 8 o'clock in London, 4 o'clock in New York, 1 p.m. in Vancouver, because you're now only seven hours behind. Excellent. 7 a.m. in Sydney, 10 p.m. in Cape Town. 1.30 a.m. in New Delhi and 5 a.m. in Tokyo. Have you been to any of those countries other than London and, New- and Vancouver? Um, I'm not sure because when he was reading them out, I wasn't listening. That's, that's a good answer. I mean, I was reading I was, them and I wasn't listening. I, was, I, was... <laughs> I heard I don't Tokyo. Know why I'd expect... Yeah. Huh? You have? I only heard Tokyo. I've not been, no, I've not been there. Oh. Well, if anybody in Tokyo wants to pay for ta- Stan to come over, let us know. Name and address on the back of a postcard. Uh, it's going to be on TNT Sports, which used to be BT Sports, which used to be Santander Sports. And this stops changing. If, you, if you're too poor or you haven't got an IPTV, then you can go and listen to it on BBC Radio 5 Live. And I think Talk Sport will actually be doing it because they were saying today that Darren Bent, uh, oh, yeah. um, Arsenal supporter, used to play for the Spurs and for God Manchester Rovers, went to the same primary and secondary school as me. Well, Possibly the same secondary. Um, right, players that are out. Uh, Timber, still out injured, end of April. Uh, Tommy Ashu, they said, uh, this is a quote from the manager from, uh, oh, today. We still have 24 hours and we're trying to have everybody fit and available. Tommy Ashu did the first part of training. We're hoping for him to be involved. Oh, Stan, is he teasing us? Probably. He likes There's to no do that, right? Saying. But like I said in one of the previous pods, he'll come back just in time for the Japanese international games. They'll take him, break him, and they will not replace him. And we'll go, all right, there he goes out for another six weeks. Ridiculous. I forgot to say hello to people. Stefan is there. He's watching a documentary on Fallout. There's a new game, uh, a new uh, TV series based on Fallout. And uh, gives me the willies. Phil Macker is there. Stephen Edwards is there. And... Uh, so it's never me. How dare you feel? BX is there and LF is there on the Twitters. Can you confirm this? 4.2 million people watching us on Twitter, LF. That'll save me a lot of trouble. So uh, Martinelli cut for on the 4th of March. They said, uh, Gabri is well. He had a slight cut to his foot and we have to wait and see how he is. I mean, I wouldn't imagine he's going to be out that long of a cut foot, would you? Well, there were reports of him seen, being seen on crutches. Which is um, sounds a bit much just for a cut on, on the foot, but who knows? 
it depends on what he's been cut by. If he's cut it while he was doing his toenails, that's all right. But if you've been cut by Wolverine, then you may never play football again. Yeah. So there is a there's degrees of how this stuff works. Uh, another mistake I've put previous games against Newcastle because I didn't properly edit it. Oh, there's 44 watching. Uh, LF says it's 44. Paul C. We've got two people in Twitter, everybody. Two people watching says it's 44. There can't be 44. LF says, but that might be me and my other 43 personalities. Mm, as long yeah. as they all support Arsenal, we don't care. So, previous games against <laughs> FC Porto. Played 7, won 3, drawn 1, lost 3. Quite even. The first time we ever played... I don't know why that's that's done in yellow. Again, another one that I didn't change the proper colour to. Part-timer, Stan. First time we played Porto was the 26th of September, 2006. We beat them 2-0. And the last three games against Porto at home... Uh, the first one was the one I just said, so I ain't going to say that again. 30th of September, 2008, beat them 4-0. 9th of March, 2010, we beat them 5-0. So we've won 2-0, 4-0, 5-0 in our three games against them. So And they've had a, a terrible away record playing teams in England. So that's um, that's none. Well, Paul's been a bit cheeky here. Paul's put none on Twitter, but 47 on X. Nah. Always be, always be Twitter. Um, where are they in the league? Ah, uh, Mikel Arteta's record against Porto and against Sergio Unpronounceable. Played one, lost one. There you go. That's easy to do. Uh, Porto are currently third, Stan, in the Liga Portugal, as I don't think anybody calls it. Seven points behind the leaders, Sporting Lisbon. Did we play those in a recent Europa League game? I think we did, didn't we, in the last Europa League that we were in, and we lost to them, didn't we? I think you could well be right. So. Echo, mushroom on. There we go. Turn the other heater on. It's getting cold, Stan. Here, it's uh, oh, it's not many degrees. Uh, yes, and I think they might have knocked us out. So I have a terrible memory. Uh, this I didn't realise. I mean, they're playing in a different league, in a different country, with different cups and different this and different that. And uh, we've both played thirty-nine games this season. They've won 37, we've won 25. They've drawn four, we've drawn six. We've both lost eight. And they've scored 77, we've scored 89. They've conceded 32, we've conceded 35. That's a little bit weird, isn't it? 39 games each. That's X-Files-ish. Their top goal scorer is Ivan Nilsson with 21 goals in 32 games. And of that, four goals in six Champions League games. Are you worried about him? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I honestly believe that with the first game that we played at Porto, mm. I think the main reason that we lost that game was that I think that most, a lot of the players on our team were overawed by the occasion. Because if you look at yeah. the results either side of that fixture in the in the league, we done pretty well. It wasn't like we were going into a bad patch of sorts. And yeah. this is something that some of our players are going to have to get used to. You know, if we move the deeper that we move into this competition, should we move deeper into this competition, you know, we might find ourselves playing games at something like the Bernabeu or the Park de Princes. And if yeah. they are finding the occasion a little bit sort of um, eye-opening to them, they're going to have to get over that. Because a lot of the players that we've ha- we have in our squad, especially the ones that we bought that have been here before, they weren't available to us. Zinchenko... Yeah. Uh, Gabriel Jesus wasn't available. Um, Havertz was still sort of like finding his way into the team and sort of like getting settled. And Thomas Partey has gone missing. <clears throat> so we, you know, the people that we, that have been this deep, we didn't, we haven't been able to rely on, rely on them to get us through. Yeah, I'm hoping that yeah. the home game, you know, with the home fixture, I hope they'll feel a little bit more comfortable playing at home. But I definitely feel that that last game in Porto. They 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 let the occasion get to them because I think uh, didn't uh, Declan Rice get booked very very early on in that game within the first maybe five minutes or so. He got booked in the second minute. There you go. To me, that sounds mm-hmm. like a player that's that's playing on nerves. 
Yes, because for a lot of them, like you say, this is, I mean, that is one of the, the biggest and best stadiums in Europe. Porto, a massive team. But the lineup on that day, Rayo in goal, he'll start. The back four will be the same Kivior, uh, Gabriel Saliba, and White. The central midfield three, Havertz, Rice, and Erdegaard. And up front, Martinelli, Trossard, and Saka. So do you think that's going to be with Martinelli being out? Who do you think is going to come in? Because in that game, he made one substitution. He took Trossard off, put Havertz up front and played Jorginho in the hole, didn't he? Yeah, he's got a few options, hasn't he? He could play Havertz up top um, and bring Jorginho back into the midfield. Could do. So there's a, he's, got a few, he's, got, he's got a few options that he can change. And yeah, who's going to play, who's going to play on the left-hand side? I mean, if, if Gabriel Jesus is fit to play, does he play on the left and perhaps he sticks with Havertz through the middle? Who knows? Like Paul C says on Twitter, Porto play a different game. We play football, but their sport is diving. That's South American influence. Uh, they see it as an art to cheat in the game and get away with it. And it's disgusting. We got away with one on Saturday. Shh, we don't talk about that. Um, right. Uh, Oh, here we go. LF on Twitter says, I honestly feel confident we will bat them 4-0. Uh, Phil says, would it be wrong? on Phil is on Facebook and on, on, on YouTube. That's dedication, Stan. Would it be wrong or overconfident to ask when the draw is for the next round? <laughs> and there's me on my Twitter right? profile. Huh? It's on Friday, isn't it? It's on Friday. I've got no idea. I think it's Friday. Huh. Well... Good luck to us. There's my um my Twitter thing with the Sherlock Holmes hat. If you need any crime solving, I'm your man. And there's me on my Facebook one. You can see there's a distinct difference in the colour of my beard there. Yeah, over the years, I've looked slightly sadder. It's old age. Does it to the best of us. Paul says 83. Whoop, whoop. This is not really 83 people. Actually, it's not gone mad like it did last time. It says there's six people watching on Facebook. Hello, six people. Oh, pardon me, watching on Facebook. I don't think we've ever had that many people watching on Facebook. That is quite amazing. This is 91 on Twitter as well. I don't like to ignore them in case there is. Hello. Um, Paul says, Jesus on the left. Now, that's a shout, isn't it? That's where he, uh, he came... He came on at the weekend and he played roughly in that kind of position. Do you think that's the future for him now that Havertz seems to have clicked in that false, false, false nine, false nine? Hard to tell, isn't it? We've got a, mm. we've got three players, really. I mean, I'm taking Eddie out, but, you know, Trossard, Jesus and, ha and Havertz. Not one of them is making a real big claim for that position. So it's still kind of open. So I, I suppose it was going to be all down to tactical tweaks in Mikel Arteta's mind of who he thinks is going to be better on the day for the things that they can bring. So, mm. which Even is kind of good. Because it, it, mean, it, it means it means that the opposition they can't predict us. They can't predict who yeah. they're going to put out there. They don't know what they're going to be dealing with. Um, well, looking at our last five games. We have both played four, both drawn none, and both lost one. We've scored 16, they've scored 17, and we both conceded three. But they are, five of them were in the Portuguese league, which they, I think they did actually draw one. I don't know why I've done that. I'm sure when I was looking for it, they drew one. Ignore that. No one's going to check. Doesn't matter. I can say what I want. Uh, Can't read Guna has joined us. Afternoon, Governor. And right. Uh, some other things that I wanted to talk Everyone got any questions for the game tomorrow? I mean, uh, about the game or questions in general, life advice we, or shopping advice. We do all of that stuff here. How do you think the game's going to go, Stan? Because uh, the pitch is going to be good. The weather, Echo, what's the weather in London tomorrow night going to be? Just the latest. Oh, here it comes. Oh, fuck me. It's 13 degrees and rainy. I can say at least the pitch won't be soaking wet and we'll be able to play decent football. But I suppose our, our pitch has got decent um, drainage. If, even if it does rain, it's not going to be too much of a problem. And we'll be able to play the beautiful game on the uh, the Emirates. What do they call it? The snooker table? The bowling green? Carpet. The carpet. Fuck, one of us know what we're on about. So the game is definitely going to go our way. All the ingredients we need to be able to claw it back and, and win that game, we need... We need a decent pitch, 
we need a decent players available. We need to be at home. The only one we can't control is who's going to be the referee. In the last game, the referee was, uh, I think he might, yeah, he's Dutch because he's, he's uh, refereed in the Dutch league, uh, Serdar. Now, does anybody know who the referee for tomorrow night's game is going to be? Would it be the same bloke? Is that how it works in Europe? Because, Dan, I have no idea. No, I've never really given that much thought, to be honest. Never really thought but about But he was that. a twat, wasn't he? Well, most of them are. Well, yeah, that's not really helped the situation, has it? Um, come on, tell me who the bloody referee is. No, no, not there. Can you name any players that we have shared with Porto? That's a question for you. Transfer market has found four. How many can you name? Uh, where did Teabag come from? Was that sporting? Ah, yes, wait there. Don't say anything else. You know what's coming up. A little bit of tea bag in the top right hand corner. There he Mr. is. Mr. The one handed well. freak. Yep. Tea bag was one of the players. Well, I'm just waiting for somebody to put in the chat who uh, the referee is going to be because it seems no one wants to tell me. And Chancellor Market doesn't say. Referee TBC. I don't know who TBC is, but he doesn't say to be confirmed. You've done me to be this, confirmed. Don't. That's what that means. I know. Um, yes. So, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, name some of the other players. Yeah. Is there anyone I can think of, to be honest? Well, you know, I, I wouldn't know, and I'm looking oh, at what about, um, oh, what was his name? Oh, uh, bu -bu 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 um, uh, played up front for us. Not really a lot. Oh, what was his name? Wenger bought him, one of his last one. Oh, what was his name? Uh, I can see his face now, but I can't think of his name. Perez? Well, I can't think. Not Robert Perez. Lucas Perez. No, we bought he's Spanish. We bought him from a Spanish team. Oh, I thought he went there alone. Mm, oh, actually, I don't know. The ones it says here was Pedro no. Ver, Vergiana, goalkeeper, Who? youth player. Never heard of him. I think oh, he's okay. now the Everton goalkeeper. Um, Kalichi Nwakalaki went there on loan, did buck nothing. And Leander oh, yeah. Seaman in 2014, we, we went there on Who? a free transfer. Leander Seaman, S I E M A N N. Apparently, he's without a club. So, after he went there, he went to Cologne and then Berlin AK and then SC Verl. And he left them four, three years ago and has done nothing since officially gone there'll be no more um somebody in the chat says that the referee for tomorrow night's game is going to be french now who said that um t yeah you can put a link in here lf uh tiger and Guna is here clement turpin really the whole of the refereeing setup is french was oh, that indeed is your real name <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What was that from? Clement Turpin. Why did you say that? That was familiar. If that is indeed your real name. I don't know where that's from, but it's just uh, it just popped into my head. It's from a film, I think. I prefer the Steve Wright. Made up name. Phil Macker is doing the triple. He's here on Twitter. He's here on YouTube. And he's here on Facebook. That is... That is dedication. Cheers, Phil. I've done. Oh, he's just saying it there. I've done them all. Next pod, I'm watching from FM through Danny's uh, letter from Danny's letterbox. Are you? <laughs> you FM is from. Why didn't you just put the R and the O there when you put apostrophe at the end of my name? Dear, oh dear. Sad times. Um, oh, LF has put a link in there, so I'm going to go and see. Oh, actually, someone else has put Lone Star was gone and put all the stuff is. Uh, Clement Turpin from France. Nicolas Stanos as the assistant referee. Erran and then Rudy. I mean, I like Rudy. I've said for a long time, Rudy Bucket, not Bucket, before anybody starts. Ah, uh, there we go. Canterbury Guna says, Lucas Perez was from Deportivo La Coruña. And they're currently, they were in the third tier of Spanish football. And he left, was it Betis or Cadiz or somewhere like that? He left them to go into the third tier of football to try and bring them back. What a nice man. Hey, Lucas Perez. So, uh, yeah. And how's it working out? 
that, that might be going to look somewhere. Oh, actually, I might kind of have a look. God knows we've got nothing else to it. Tell us how the game's going to go, Stan, because you're a, you've got wise words and it might help. You might you might ease some people's worries about not getting through. We are we have to get through, don't we? Yeah, I think I'm fairly confident that we can fix what happened away at Porto because we are playing at home and we are in a, a, a rich uh, vein of, of form and we're going to have yeah. the home crowd to, 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 to help us. So, you know, it's going to be, I think it's going to be, it could be a tight game. Because uh, um, I think the last time that I was on here with you, you looked at uh, how Porto were in their uh, qualifying games and they looked really good away from home as well. With, they didn't look too, they didn't look too shabby, but I have yeah. to believe that we've got enough about us to go through to the next round and that'll be fantastic if we can do that. You know, I mean, we've, we've, we've got out of the groups, which was uh, which was kind of like the first test in our return to the big uh, competition in Europe. So now for me, each each round we could get through is a bonus. Yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, nine goals in 21 games for Perez in the third tier last season. And Deportivo La Coruña at currently top of the third tier tier of football nine goals in 24 games this season there you go you ask and i deliver because i'm good like that yeah anybody in the chat think we're not going to make it through because uh you would have to be a little bit bonkers oh that reminds me i've got to um i haven't been doing the the predictions thing so i want you i need you all to do every single one of you the uh the four people on facebook three people on facebook who must have died the 14 people in YouTube and the 122 not watching on Twitter. I need you all. Oh, size turned up. Better late than never, Sai. Thank you very much. I want you all to put your predictions in. And then in the space of 45 seconds, I will read them out as quickly as possible, like Tiger and Guna has done. And then I will save them. And then I will go through them all. And then I'll make a YouTube Reels and a Facebook Shorts. Or the other way around. I don't know. So, so far, it's not a very long YouTube shorts because I've only got one prediction. Then I've got mine in stands. We might have to pad them out stand for a little while. That's Phil, don't put 2-0 to us. I need, I need everybody to do it properly. Either put the score like Tiger and Guna have, 3-1, or, but don't, do, don't put 4-0 to us. That's nonsense. Do it again properly. There you go. Boy, 10's done. 0-0. 0-0. Fuck about... So, Tiger and Goon, I'm saving yours. Lone Star Londoner, saved yours. Boy 10, <clears throat> saved yours. Sai, as usual, absolute piss take. Oh, Demsex done it. LF has done it. B -X oh, you lovely people. Look at those. Doing them all properly makes it easier because I've, been, I've got to read it at the spit. I can barely make a proper sentence when I'm talking slowly. How am I going to do all this when I'm not talking slowly? Talking quickly. It's not easy, you know. But someone's got to do it. Oh, there's another one. Paul C has done it. Canterbury's gone a bit cheeky. Oh, nice. I hope it doesn't go um, that, oh, that, that way. You what? So I hope it doesn't go that way. That we have to take it into into a penalty shootout or anything like that. I hope that we can come out early, score that early goal that we like to do, and then uh, seal it off with a second goal. Hmm. That would be the defense. thing in. That would be the best thing to do for us because we don't need the. But again, if you are going to have a, a penalty shootout, you'd want to have it on your own stadium, wouldn't you? Yeah. If it has to be, then yeah. Mm. Um, anyone else? Uh, where is he? Where, um, Phil, put yours in properly. Oh, there we go. He's done it. He's done it on Facebook. He's called me a jackass. I'm not happy about that. What other things do we need to talk about the game stand? Because these preview shows are only quite short. Well, I don't really know what much else there is, really. To, to... Actually, I haven't had you on for a preview show for a little while. How do you feel about the, uh, this, the, this run of eight games? How far can it continue? Are you going to be with me for the preview game for... Um, actually, after this game, we haven't got anything Man for about City. two weeks. Yeah, our next game is the 31st isn't it it's the end of the month yeah there's no point in me asking you now if you're free in in three weeks time is there 
That's got a no idea long what's going to long range. That's a long range booking. That is. Yeah, that yeah, is. It is. So but, have you felt but, about but this one of eight games? Can we continue it? Well, before I answer that question, if I may, just you looking may. at the way that the league, that the league is uh, standing at the moment, <laughs> and I think I put this out on Twitter yesterday, and I think I think that the three the top teams, us, Liverpool, and Man City, I think all of us at somewhere are going to drop points in the running. Mm. You know, there'll be some draws, maybe a loss, and it's just up to us to collect more points than the other two. I know it sounds easier said than done, but now that we're in the top spot, if we can keep going, we remain in the top spot. Whereas last season, we were driving in the top spot almost from day one, and we, we broke a record, didn't we? Something like 240-odd days sitting at the top of the Premier League. And then, and then uh, it, it kind of fell apart near the end. Hopefully now it's coming the other way where we seem to be hitting a, a rich vein of form. We've managed to creep into that top spot. There's 10 games to go. And if we can just stay in the saddle for those 10 games and make less mistakes than the other two, then it's in the bag, isn't it? You know? I definitely right. think Liverpool are going to have some problems because, yeah, I don't think that this... I don't think the Klopp thing is... is I think that could be a distraction more than an edge. You know, a lot of people are going, oh, they're all going to be playing out of their skins for Klopp. What about those players who maybe Klopp has bought a player in the last couple of windows who's had to bring their family over to a new country, buy a house and put their kids in school and get settled in a new environment. And now they just found out that the guy that bought them is leaving. How do they know that the next guy coming in is going to want to keep them? So I, there could be a lot of players in that team that have their minds on, on, on other matters. Because they do have a long time. Stephen Gerrard might get the job. Matt, the banter, if he got that job. I don't even like the banter word, but that would that would reinvent the meaning of the word banter because that bloke is an absolute it's like like Rooney getting the Man United job. That that's the exactly. kind of level that um that those more Lampard getting the Chelsea job. Oh that's it. It's the trifecta of wanky players that played for England and won fuck all. But are they the greatest players? No, they're not. No, they weren't. No, they couldn't uh, do I, it. I just want to answer for lone stars. Well. I'm not saying that they don't want to win, but, you know, you might have other things going on in your mind, right? You're thinking about the managers mm -hmm. leaving. I've only, been, I've only been brought in. You know, I've been here less than a year or a year or whatever it may be. You might have these concerns in your mind, which just might mean that you're not concentrating as fully on what it is that you should be doing in your job, which in this case is playing football. You know, I'm just throwing it out there as a bit of a devil's advocate thing that it doesn't necessarily mean that Klopp leaving is going to have everybody firing on all cylinders. Woohoo! And five fiving it in every game. Also, as well, they're having to field a lot of youngsters, which has kind of been working out. But, you know, with youngsters, youngsters aren't very, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for, consistent in their, in their uh, performances. That's what you found out. We have found that out along the way. So they've mm -hmm. got that to contend with as well. And City... City, um, I watched the game against Liverpool and they looked like they were struggling a little bit. They didn't look like they were just cruising with another gear to go like they do in a lot of other matches. Well, they've been winning a lot of games 1-0. Very boring football, haven't they? Yeah, they've just been squeaking sometimes, looking like, like they've, they're squeaking wins. So yeah. if you look at the three teams, I mean, we seem to be the, we're the ones that are trending upwards at the moment. Yeah, so okay. that's how I, that's how I see that. I'm saying plus that's how I see this around. Yeah, as well. Yeah, so that's kind of how I see it panning out for us. You know, we've managed to get our way into the top seat, and it's it's ours to lose. Now, it's ours to lose. Mm. I mean, there's not going to be many seasons where the teams in the top three teams, like if we're one of them, that we've got four points off of Liverpool. And so far, we've got three out of three out off of Man City. It's, I don't think it's happened in living memory where we can say we've got eight points out of a possible 12 if we draw in Man City. I mean, a draw would do would be OK, but we've got everything we need. I mean, all of our best players are coming back. So, yeah, we've got the backup. Yeah. Uh, Clock End says, right, boys, got to beat those Port Porto slags tomorrow. <laughs> Lone Star says, Klopp and his staff don't let players chase daisies 
and let their imaginations run wild. Canterbury, City always struggle at Anfield. Boy 10, put Carrick at United, Gerrard at Liverpool and Lampard at Chelsea, Shearer at Newcastle and Terry Henry at Arsenal. It's the Premier League <laughs> Premier League legends EXODIA. What does that mean? Can you imagine if, if that happened, you'd have you'd have Liverpool, Chelsea, Newcastle and us fighting it out to, to stay up, probably. <laughs> yeah, it is. At it the bottom end well. of the table. All of them have been shit managers. And uh, yeah. Yeah, Vieira. even if we had Vieira and not um, Henri, another shit manager. Graham Denton says, finally caught uh, caught the live. Yes, indeed, we did them late night for people who, who uh, are in other parts of the world. Phil says, are we forgetting we play City next? Yeah. Oh, he's not asking us. He's asking. And, and Lone Star, yeah, I was about to say, Lone Star's right. They're, City's running on paper does look the easier one. Plus, we've got a North London derby to come up and form goes... Out of the door of the window, during the North London course. derby, and they could easily. Got Chelsea, got Chelsea coming up as well. They were terrible also tonight. Barely Manchester. beat Newcastle three two. Hor horrible also, game. Man United as well. We got we got them as well. Mm. You know, and teams like Chelsea and Man United are playing shit at the moment, but they they are capable of of getting the odd win because it's not like they're fielding rubbish players, right? So they are capable of carving out a win. We just don't need them. To find that form against us in our running. Lone Star wants to know: Should he go to Vegas next week? I can answer um, that. Yes, I went towards the end of last year for five yeah. days. It's the first time that I've ever been, and I, it was uh, it was in October. It was about three weeks before the Formula One, and it was fantastic. Yeah. And I can tell you a little trick to do Lone Star that worked. Oh. It worked for me. And I'll send you the video, Danny, after the show so that you can see it. There's a yeah. little thing that you can do. It's called the it's called the Las Vegas sandwich. What you do is when you go to check into your hotel and they ask for your passports and everything, inside your passport, you want to have a $20 bill just sticking out. And you want to say uh to the to the to the person that you know behind the reception, as you're passing them your passport, you want to say to them, um would there happen to be any chance of an of an upgrade? How you fixed something like that? And we had a standard room, and we got there. We got there at midnight, so it was late, late in the night. There was no, you know, there wasn't a long snake queue to get to the desk. I was straight in and up to the desk, and I did it. And she sort of seriously, it was like it was like two hotel rooms, but one room. We had like a, a hot tub and everything. I'll show. I'll send it to you, Danny, so you can see you can see the room that we had, and it worked. So try it. It does work. If you've got the balls to try it, smiling face, you never know. For your $20, you could uh, get a very nice upgrade. Why so only 20 know. Why not a 50 Then you're guaranteed to get it. Oh, I don't know. I, I heard about it, and I was uh, I watched a few... Uh, uh, I, looked up, I looked it up, watched a few videos. That some people said that they tried it, and it didn't work. Some people said they were trying it, and it was still working. So I thought, fuck it, I'll just go for it. Claims right, his only yeah, works right. with an English accent. Sexy Frank, who we all know, mate of mine, he, uh, he's there at the moment. Him and his missus have gone for his 50th birthday. I've done the helicopter ride and everything. I said, don't do the helicopter ride, Frank. You've got three kids and I don't want to have to look after them. I really, like, I, really enjoy, I really enjoyed it then. If you do your homework beforehand and you work out like, places to go and eat, like during the day we'd go down to this... Uh, uh, down towards the Golden Nugget Casino. I can't remember what the name of the casino was. You could go in there. And have like this huge like hot dog and a beer for two bucks. It's like two dollars. How much did you spend for the whole five days? Do you reckon in pounds? Mm. Uh, um, I'm not sure. We did go and see a show. We went to see David Copperfield at the MGM, and uh, you know we just went walking around at night, you know, into the various casinos and everything. And I'm not really, I'm not really, I don't gamble. So that I wasn't affected by that, you know. I wasn't sort of like on tables or anything. I was just like watching and walking around and stuff like that. But it's a really great, it's a really good place. It's really busy. You feel like busy places and that, and everything goes on late into the night. And you'll love it. I wouldn't mind going, but you know, getting it so I can go and have a room that I could use and a bed that I could use. Not going to be easy, and I'm not paying for Big Bob to come with me so he can carry me around because. Uh, yeah, you'll end up chinning somewhere. And Mr. Hertz has turned up. As that you're might. late, there's no flags for you. Um, stage door casino, says Lone Star. Yeah, that's London. the one, that's it. That's the one with the hot dog and the and the, the beer. 
I believe. I think that's it. Stage door casino. So I done a lot of homework before I went, and I and I knew where to go. There's another place. Um, oh, what is it? Don. It's like a steak restaurant. It's quite a popular chain. I can't remember what it's called. But if you go there at the if you go there at the right time, you can have like a huge sirloin steak, you know, f French fries, vegetables, and all that. And it's really cheap if you go at the right time of the day. Phil says I gate crashed an Italian wedding at the Bellagio, and I felt like Phil Collins in Miami Vice. I bet you had the suit like Phil <laughs> Collins in Miami Vice from the last time you splashed out on a suit. It was probably about 1983. Jeez, I've got the box set of Miami Vice. So I know exactly what he's talking about. I love that show. Uh, it is, I'm watching it um, on uh, on that website that I use that you just stream every single TV channel in the world. And if you want to know what it is, people, I'll tell you. You go and you type into your browser, hdtoday.cc. Go there. Every film, H every TV D show. Today. HD today, today what? Dot .cc. Brilliant. Just go and have a look. Okay. Turn your um, ad blocker on for it. Otherwise, you get lots of boobs on your page. And then uh, sometimes it buffers a little bit, but everything's in HD, all the latest films and all the latest TV shows. I'm watching Fringe on there at the moment. Stan, Mr. Stanley, yes. not Victor Collymore, you have dragged me away from the topic of why we are here. People, at the moment, we have got 10 predictions. If we you turned into be a famous, Las Vegas travel show, didn't we? <laughs> if, you, if you think I'm putting on nipple tassels, young man, we need a few more viewers. All right, people, if you want to have the possibility of being famous, because I am going to do a 45-second YouTube Reels, Facebook Shorts, all the other way around. I'm going to read out all your all your predictions as quick as possible, but it needs to be in a prediction. that I just put 1-0, 4-0, 5-0, something like that. Don't be funny. Don't put anything else in there. And then I'm going to read them all off, and then I'm going to cut it. I'm going to send it up at his own YouTube video. And then tomorrow, if any of you remind me, I will come back and I will play the video. And we will see which one of you cheeky monkeys got it right. And me and Stan will give ours right at the very end. Canterbury says, Danny's got a box. I've got loads of boxes. I don't, I don't get stuff from Amazon anymore. I've disowned them. I use eBay. Which is nice. Come on, people. Mr. Hertz, there's been none, no prediction from you. Um, uh, size done his as usual, massive loss. Come on, people, you've got 30 seconds to get your predictions in. Otherwise, when I start doing it, I won't include the new predictions. Me and Stan are very confident about tomorrow. It's going to be a is it going to be a good game, Stan? That's that's what uh, that's what the neutrals want to see. Well, I'm not going to actually be, get to see it because it's uh, it's at one o'clock, which is right in the middle of my day, mm. so I will. Tomorrow, I will still be teaching a class at that time. So that's going to be really annoying. And mm -hmm. what I usually try and do is, is try to rush home and without seeing it, without looking at my phone all day and then watch the replay on yeah. Paramount. And you actually saved me from the last one, Danny, because I managed to avoid my phone all day. Yeah. And as I was getting on the bus on the way home from work, I just happened to glance at my phone and on the, your, a text of yours came up for the show and it had the score. And I was like, actually, I think you've probably saved me from wasting two hours of my life watching that. So I didn't have to watch ah, it. What, what game was that? The Brentford one? Oh, no, the Porto one. Because we scored. Oh, uh, yeah. they, Don't uh, watch the Porto that. one where they, where they scored right near the end, right? Yeah. What a load of shit that was. I saw that score and I thought, actually, you saved me because I was going to rush home and sit there and watch it for two hours. Hmm. Good. Um... Am I teaching? No. Lance, I was asking if I'm teaching a cooking class. That's probably one of the last things I could teach anyone to cook. Unless unless it was a pot noodle, I could probably teach someone to cook that. Uh, Lone Star London says 3 p.m. in Texas. I said to uh, Sean, I want to move to somewhere warm. I said, I'd like to go to Texas because people in Texas, they have lots of meat, which is good. And, and yep. they, okay. they believe in uh, cowboy justice. You fuck about, you find out. I love that about that. And uh, the Texas accent on ladies. Oh, hello. I go, hey, hello, ladies. I'm from England. Hello. And they go, oh, my God. They love it. Uh, Tiger and Goon says, it's on 4 a.m. in Australia. Bloody hell. Fuck that. Ah, oh, Graham, did you already have a, because uh, Graham, no, Graham, it's like, that's the final one. Graham has uh, done his, although he's added a load of stuff after. The main thing is, Graham, you've put the score first. And that's it. Right, people, I'm now going to leave a five-second gap. 
Then I'm going to read all your predictions. I'm going to pop them up, read them all. And then, Stan, I'm going to ask you your prediction. And then you tell me as quick as possible. I'll do my prediction. Then I'll leave a little gap. And then we will carry on talking after that and end the show. Right, here we go. See how badly I fucked this up. Um, here's the little gap. Here is the predictions for Arsenal v Porto from last night's show. Tiger and Guna, 3-1. Lone Star Londoner, 2-1 after extra time. Boy 10, 0-0. Sai, 5-0 Porto. Disgusting. Demsec, 2-0. LF, 4-0. BX, 2-0. Paul C, 4-1. Canterbury Guna, 1-0 then penalties. Phil Macker, 4-0. Mike Hertz, 3-0. Graham Denton, 3-0. Uh, Stan, what are you going for? 2-1 Arsenal win. I'm going to go 4-1 Arsenal win. And there you go. We'll see on Tuesday night how many of you got that right. We should have another little, There's little competition. There. I'll have a little got competition it. as well. And see if people can see if people can actually work out what it is that I teach. There's no prize. Don't phone, it's just for fun, as they say in the big <laughs> breakfast. So over the next week or so, you can keep telling Danny, even if I'm not here, what you think I teach. And see if we can find a winner. Yeah, I know what it is. Yeah, but if you put the, not, what no. you think it is on a postcard and send it into uh, Tiswas, ATV Land, Birmingham, B12JP. How do I remember that, lock. Stan? Tin, 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 lock. There you go. Uh, should we mine that little gap? That little gap is there on purpose. What's the prize? The prize is he will teach you the course. And, you will have a <laughs> PA, and then you will have a PhD. I thought I got it right, says Phil. No. Sex education, <laughs> says Mike Hertz. Scientology. Well, it's not far away, Soci Stan. Sociology, no. Oh, it's the same thing. Uh, oh, boy 10 says chemistry. I don't think anybody's going to get it. Look at Stan. Uh, tell me it's Spanish. Do you speak any other languages, Stan? No. Dutch? No, a few words and a few other things, you know, but not fluent, no. Mm. Uh, Dem says, bad English, like what I type. Graham <laughs> says, Shakespeare with that voice, surely. Stephen says, do you teach ham? Ham? Precisely. Phil says, pass the duchy to the left-hand side, defo. Um, how to shear sheep, says Lone Star. Boy 10, physical education. Uh, Demsec says RE, because Stan is a man of religion, aren't you, Stan? It's, it's quite well known. I am, Just when people meet him, they go, Jesus fucking Christ, don't kill me. Yeah, stay at that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Canterbury says, is it martial arts? No, but I like that. I wish it was. <laughs> Tiger, are you in Canada, Stan? Yes, I am. I'm in Vancouver. Boy 10 says, you teach English in the local Asian school. No, but you're kind of, in a way, you're, there's something about that that's kind of close. But I don't want to say it's close because I don't want people to go down a blind alley with that one. So forget that. Tom Andrews turned up. Oh, wait, just saw the notification on my phone. Hello, Stan. Hi, Tom. Cheers, Tom. Phil Macker says, gangster fashion. Anybody <laughs> outside of, of the UK, tell me where what, what city you live in. Because you know, at the beginning of the show, I do this thing where I say oh, yeah. uh, New York, Vancouver, Sydney. Just tell me what main city you're in, and I'll say Phil Macker in. I'm trying to think in Rio de Janeiro. Don't, don't you in England, Phil? So you can't have it. So people, tell me what cities you're in, and the next time I'll say your name and the city you're in, and then I'll just have a little list of those. Ah, there we go, Austin, Texas. I'm going to go to YouTube and copy that because I'm too lazy to type it. Piss. Nearly fucking banned you for that. That'd been bad. Um, so we got oh, it's so hard. All right, there. Highlight the entire fucking thing. All right, so uh, we can change New York actually underneath uh so I'm gonna have that one there, and I'll just have to go and figure out where you are. Um oh Mike is in a is Texas and San Jose. Are they in the same? Why aren't you deleting no. that? Why are they in the same time zone? They're not, are they? I don't know if they're in the same. Oh, I don't know about that, but one's in California, isn't it? 
and the other one's in Texas. Uh, Tom Andrew is in Philadelphia. Now that's top right, so that's the same as New York, isn't it? Near New York, I think, yeah. Yeah, so I can area. use that one. And okay, that's, uh, that's gone wrong. <laughs> yeah, so any other ones then let me know and I'll I'll try and update them. Just so I can have maybe ten or fifteen size in Dallas. Another one, that's another Texan. It's got quite a list of the shit there in size, Texas. Size not from Dallas. Um Kings Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Graham's there to be going on with Detroit. Yeah, my postcode's Peter Baron as well. Uh, Graham's uh, south of Detroit. I've got too many for America. Um, so I'm going to add it's that some time, isn't it? What time is it in huh? England now? What time is it in the UK? It's like midnight, 11 right? 51. Exactly. 11 51. Exactly. Everyone's going to bed. Yeah. This huh? is this is prime for the uh, for the United States this time, isn't it? It's prime. Yes. So I've got a few. Maybe when it's um what I'll have to do, because there's quite a few of you in uh in the US of A, I will swap them around. If I put them all on here, then I'll be able to change them around every now and then. Um oh Lone Star says, Do you do teach pet sittings? No. 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 Uh are you teaching numbers to foreigners? <laughs> no. Uh, no, that's not it. Look, we're getting a little bit off a track here. Right, I've got to are. go. Because Stan's only just gone home. We've done 46 minutes for a show that should have been 20 minutes. If you go back to the 20 minute mark, we were on course to do a 25 minute show. We were. Then it got completely off track, Stan, because you kept waffling on about waffles and you've completely bowled me a googly. So, uh, Las Vegas. That was it. Well, there, that's where, that's where. So, if you're listening now, just stop when we talk about Las Vegas. All right, it, all went a, it all went a bit Judith Chalmers, didn't it? At Las Vegas. We have done this score predictions, Tom. You you missed it. So um, uh, we want. Uh, are, are you going to tell them what you do now, son? Are you going to make them? If you want to find out, you have to wait for about three weeks. Yeah, I'll tell, tell next time you, I'll tell them the next time you tune in. So I keep them waiting. He's a harsh taskmaster. Well, I can't force him to. So, Stan, that is it. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. You have been um, You're welcome. Thank you. You've been you've been delicatessence. That's what you've been. I've been like a delicatessen. Okay. I'll, yes, you have. I do like cup, cold cut meats, so I'll take that. I've got some in the fridge. Uh, Ocado's finest, I'll have you know, and they're lovely. Thank you very much to everybody who watched today. Uh, we will be back about five minutes after the game tomorrow. It'll be me and Deke. Deke will be hosting, and I'll be pressing buttons. And uh, we will look forward to celebrating Arsenal smashing Porto 6 0. Yes. And with that, Stan. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Stan. Goodbye, everyone. As soon as I scored that goal, I was fucking livid. Get down, dog. Splendid business. He nearly caught the bloody thing. What are you talking about? <laughs> so I've just eaten a full quiche. Well, you don't often see him at him. So when you see him in the supermarket, they need to be swagged, microwaved immediately, and get the brown sauce on and bosh, Bob's your uncle. Never in doubt. <laughs>